Pan-African financial services firm Vetiva Capital Management Limited has released its 2022 Outlook report titled Running Scared. The 70-page report takes a look at the economic triggers that could affect the globe and Nigeria, Africa's largest economy in the year 2022. Joining us to discuss further is Luke Ofojebe, who's the head of research at Vetiva Capital Management. Uh, Luke, good afternoon. Thanks so much for joining us. So your um, title, Running Scared, it sounds like the you know, title of a thriller or a horror movie. Why, why that title? Um, first and foremost, good afternoon, Rotus. Thank you for having me here today. Um, so um, looking at the title of the report, which sounds quite interesting, um, the reason we chose that title was because of some um, negative events we think might play out next year. One is the likelihood that we are going to see higher borrowing cost, and that might affect um, um, appetite for fresh investments in the local economy. Um, the second one being the um, being oil prices. The expectation is that oil prices are expected to remain strong um, next year, and that might um, weaken the ability of the government to continue with its subsidy regime. So. There is a likelihood that we might see an increase in the price of PMX next year, even though we are not going to see um, a total deregulation of the downstream segments, and that will further weigh on um, um, that will further weigh on inflationary pressures, and more so given the increased um, increasing demand for FX in the country, both for um, foreign portfolio investors as well as manufacturers, we expect to um, to see continued depreciation on the naira. Uh, which we further weigh on consumer spend um, next year. So all these factors put together uh, actually point to the fact that even though we expect economic growth next year, there are some fact. These are factors that can actually, you know, affect the profitability of companies uh, across Nigeria. Great stuff. Um, I want to talk about inflation. Inflation has been one of the biggest talking points of 2021. We've got a raft of central bankers. Uh, that are going to be making decisions. We're just talking about that with uh, Bode Oshosomi, our uh, analyst here. Um, you've got a chart looking at um, inflation for emerging markets. Uh, inflation, I think, in the United States, um, Germany, and Japan. What's the impact on, of, on emerging markets when you've got rising inflation in developed markets? What's, what's the possible impact there? Um, um, pretty much straightforward, right? Um, the rise in inflation in these advanced economies um, has been driven by increases in um, prices of commodities, especially for oil. I mean, um, this year we saw oil price rising to as high as eighty dollars per barrel, currently around seventy-seven dollars, and the expectation is that you know we are going to see uh, much higher oil prices next year due to supply um, disruptions as well as increasing demand. So on that basis, inflation is expected to go up next year in advanced economies. So how these economies plan to tame inflation is to increase rates. Um, and what that means is that uh, we are likely going to see capital flights from developing markets, Nigeria inclusive, um, to these advanced markets. And in order to prevent these capital flights or to reduce the pace of these capital flights, um, central banks in developing markets will also be looking at raising rates. And this brings us back to Nigeria, where we expect the CBN to increase rates next year on the back of this. Even though the CBN might want to continue with its pro-growth stance by not increasing the NPR, the reality is that in the secondary market, which is more active, um, we are likely going to see an increase in rates. And that should translate to higher borrowing costs for companies in Nigeria. Now, we're looking at inflation for Ghana, Kenya, Nigeria. What is this trend going to continue in the new year as we look at uh, these African countries here with, uh, well, pretty high inflation, well, at least for Nigeria and Kenya, uh, and then even Ghana? What, what, what's the trend go like going into 2022? Um, really, it's different strokes for different folks here. Um, so you're looking at um, different economies um, that are influenced by different factors. Um, so for the um, resource dependent um, um, commodity dependent um, countries like Nigeria, for instance, um, the expectation is that inflation, yes, might still go up, uh, mainly due to uh, um, currency depreciation in our own case. And then for um, countries like Kenya, for instance, you know it, that that country doesn't produce oil; it relies on the importation of. Um, petroleum product from other countries um, to actually 
um, carry out some um, economic activities, right? So for a country like Kenya, with the expectation that oil prices are going to go up, um, is really going to affect um, um, price levels in that country. So we expect inflation to go up, mainly um, driven by that. Um, then for Ghana, um, since late 2020, we've been seeing improving demand for um, uh, for different products across the economy. So we expect this um, continual increases in demand to continue to influence price levels um, in the country. So we do expect inflation to also increase. But in, in terms of the pace of increase, I think um, in Kenya, we should see the um, higher speed of increase, given the fact that um, oil prices um, are going to influence the importation of petroleum products into that country. So we expect inflation to rise significantly in Kenya. All right. Now, bond yields. Uh, you've got a, a chart where you're comparing bond yields um, across different, different markets. Um, how are those bond yields likely to be impacted? Yeah, so this is the yield on 10-year bond performance year to date, US, UK, Nigeria, South Africa, Kenya. How are these likely to be impacted uh, next year? Will it be from borrowing to try to plug budget deficits? Um, so next year, um, for advanced economies, like I said earlier, right, um, because of the increases we've seen in inflation and the expectation that inflation is going to rise further, we are going to see higher rates in these advanced economies in order to tame inflation. Um, same thing here in developing markets, in order to prevent capital flights, we are going to see higher rates um, as well. And then for, for the Nigerian markets, I mean, specifically for the Nigerian markets, um, looking at the budget for 2020, that's a record budget of about 16 trillion naira. Uh, it comes with a deficit of around um, 6 trillion naira. Um, and given the fact that, you know, the government is quite bullish in terms of its budget assumptions, especially when you are looking at, yeah, um, assumption for oil production of around 1.8 million barrels, but that's quite bullish. So the deficit could be much higher than that, which means that the government will like, we need to rely on the debt markets to finance its budgets. So that should also drive you know, inflation much, uh, sorry, that should also drive interest rates much higher next year. So in terms of where we are going to see much increases, it's very likely that um, it should be in the short-term instruments, right? Um, of course, we, we are going to see increases in the long-term instruments as well, um, but because you want to keep investors in these local markets, you want to prevent them from you know, leaving for advanced markets. And these investors, given that they focus more on short-term instruments, it's very likely that it's the short-term instruments that are going to see the highest increases next year. Very interesting. Let's take a look at the, that yield curve uh, moves. Um, let's look at the equity markets. You've got an interesting chart here showing sector performance. If you can talk us through this, it looks like it was in the uh, NGX, on the Nigerian exchange. It looks like it was driven by, uh, look at that, 60.4% oil and gas. What, what, what happened here? Um, for oil and gas, I mean, we, we all saw what happened last year, right? Um, that was the sector, one of the most affected sectors last year um, was definitely oil and gas. Uh, um, because of the low oil prices, we saw oil price, you know, drop into as low as dollars per barrel. So that really affected the oil revenue for a number of oil producing companies. And we saw that bearish sentiment on, on oil and gas stocks last year. Surplus, for instance, dropped to as low as um, 300 naira per share um, to turn and drop PLC. Um, same thing dropped to around um, 130 naira per share. And we just saw more bearish sentiments last year. Um, this year, given the improvements we've seen in, uh, in oil prices, improvements in oil revenue, um, Seplat, for instance, has returned back to profitability. So far this year, the company has returned um, um, about um, $50 million in net profits, uh, right? Um, so that has really um, translated to bullish sentiments on the stock. And yet to date, the company has returned over um, 50%. For Total Nigeria PLC, same bullish sentiment, but mainly driven by increases in the prices of lubricants and also improvements in, in margins from the lubricant operations. And that has increased profitability for Total Nigeria PLC significantly. So on that note, we saw uh, um, significant year to gain um, yet to date gains on total and GRPLC. Then when you look at other sectors like consumer goods, um, I mean, the story started well at the start of the year when we started seeing recoveries in sales volumes, um, revenue increased significantly, 
um, profit after tax also increased for a number of these players. However, um, in the second half of the year, we started seeing declining margins due to inflationary pressures. Um, you know, for a number of these manufacturers, they need to rely on FX for the importation of raw materials. Um, so because of um, the performance of FX in Nigeria, that's really affected their operating costs significantly. And a number of them saw uh, margins decline, as well as, you know, profits after tax also coming in much lower than what analysts are expecting. So we saw negative sentiment on, this, on these stocks. Industrial goods, um, quite positive so far. Um, mainly driven by um, increasing um, in the consumption of cement from both the public and private sectors. And the expectation is that we are going to see more of that next year as well. Um, banking, it has been, this year, 2021, has not been a great year for them, um, mainly driven by, you know, the negative performance we saw in their interest income. The huge environment has not been favorable, um, looking at, you know, declining interest income. Um, also, even the non-interest income for a number of banks um, wasn't that great. When you look at yesterday's performance, we are now seeing, you know, more like a flattish performance from that line and thing. So that also affected um, sentiment on these banking stocks, um, basically. Then for insurance, it's been more of speculative um, trading. Fantastic stuff. Uh, Luke uh, Ofojebe, Head of Research, Vetiva Capital Management. It's a 70-page report. We couldn't get through everything, but thank you so much uh, for joining us. We'll probably have to have you back to talk about telcos and other sectors in the report. Really appreciate your insights, and thanks for joining us.